Ah yes, the Wii U. It may not have succeeded commercially, but this system has certainly left behind quite a legacy, especially if you're a fan of platform games. And Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze is one of the best on the system. With its potent mix of tight controls, great level design, and a memorable David Wise soundtrack, it's one of the reasons I've continued to use my Wii U. And now, four years later, Retro Studios' platforming masterpiece has returned on the Nintendo Switch, and hopefully here, on this wildly successful platform, it will finally find the audience it so deserves. But how does it stack up on the Switch, and what kind of enhancements can you expect? Well, it turns out that this is a rather straightforward port, with a few minor tweaks and changes designed to take advantage of the Switch's more capable hardware. It's a more polished, streamlined experience all around. But first, to refresh your memory, on the Wii U, Tropical Freeze is a 720p game running at a rock solid 60 frames per second with some pretty hefty loading times. In bringing the game to the Switch then, the resolution has been increased to a full 1920x1080, when played in docked mode at least. The visual design works well at 720p on the Wii U, but the bump up to 1080p allows smaller details to shine. Of course, it still might surprise you how subtle the jump from 720 to 1080p can appear in many scenes. Textures are certainly sharper on Switch, but the fixed perspective helps minimize image noise and aliasing on the Wii U. If you're watching this video on a smartphone, it may even be difficult to see any visible differences at all, so let's zoom in for a closer look. Now we can appreciate the extra visual minutia made possible through an increased pixel count. And how about a second example? Let's freeze the video once again, and now you can observe the differences. As for portable mode, our pixel counts reveal a resolution of around 1152 by 648. In determining this figure, we examined numerous levels in search of a potential adaptive resolution implementation, but came up empty. Tropical Freeze appears to use a fixed resolution in both docked and handheld mode. When playing on the Switch's LCD screen, a touch of blur is evident thanks to the sub-native resolution, but as we saw on Wii U, the design of the artwork helps mitigate the issues inherent in sub-native output on a fixed pixel display. Either way, Tropical Freeze is a lovely game. It's not cutting edge, mind you, but it does demonstrate the benefit of an optimized engine and thoughtful art direction. From the beautiful rock formations found in Bright Savannah to the porous corals situated throughout Seabreeze Cove, it's clear that the environment artists have done a great job. Stages like this are especially impressive. The mix of geometry with rich texturing gives the impression of extra detail. And all this detail is consistent across both versions. For the most part, the Switch version of Tropical Freeze looks visually identical to the Wii U version, save for some very minor changes. One such difference can be seen in Kong's fur shading. If we toggle between the two, the change should be obvious, but you can see that it appears slightly different on Switch in comparison to the original version. This also applies to the environment, which exhibits similar, minor differences, something which only becomes evident when, once again, cycling between comparison shots. Beyond this, certain aspects of the rendering pipeline seem tied to resolution. The bloom lighting in this stage increases its radius when the game renders at a lower resolution, for instance. The Wii U version is a closer match for our portable shots than when docked at 1080p. Aside from these minor visual tweaks and the increase in resolution, however, there really isn't much else in the way of visual enhancements. It's difficult to complain when the game looks this nice, however, and it certainly is miles beyond the last attempt at bringing Retro's Donkey Kong game to a portable Nintendo system. There is, thankfully, another major enhancement which is worth discussing, the loading times. The Wii U is not known for speedy loading times, and even Retro Studios' Magic Touch isn't enough to fully overcome these limitations. If we start each game from the respective system menu, the Wii U requires significantly more time to reach the game's main menu. Note that I'm using the disc version of Tropical Freeze on Wii U, and the digital download version can load slightly faster, though it still ultimately falls behind the Switch. Now after you select your save file and begin the game, a startup sequence featuring beautifully animated clouds appears. On Switch, it takes roughly 11 seconds when installed to a microSD card. 
Over on Wii U though, the animation hitches and stutters as the system loads the world map, only arriving at its destination after nearly 40 seconds. Now popping into an actual stage from the world map does prove faster on Wii U, but the Switch is still nearly twice as fast, making it a lot easier to pick up and play on Nintendo's newer machine. One other thing worth mentioning here though is that the Wii U can appear to load faster in some situations due to some clever programming. You see, our initial startup shows almost 40 seconds, but in another run we got this instead. So what's going on? Well our best guess is that the game loads data in the background while sitting at the main menu. If you button through the options quickly, the loading screen will take longer. Thankfully, the Switch version is fast no matter how quickly you navigate the menu. So at this point then, we've established that Tropical Freeze delivers sharper visuals on the Switch, along with significantly faster loading times, but the game's defining technical trait is and always has been its blistering frame rate. Going back to its work on Metroid Prime, its sequels, and the first DKC Returns, Retro Studio has always placed an emphasis on a smooth 60 frames per second level of performance, and of course Tropical Freeze is no exception. Unsurprisingly then, when docked, the Switch has no issues powering through every single level in the game at the target frame rate. Not once in my playthrough did Tropical Freeze ever drop a frame or exhibit any sort of hitching at all, well at least outside of the loading screens. It's one of those rare games that manages to completely avoid slowdown of any sort. Of course, there's always that 0.1% chance that a dropped frame could crop up here or there, but I was unable to locate even a single missed update. It's a very stable game. And the same is true of its handheld performance. This is where the frame rate is even more critical, really. The 3DS port of DKC Returns with its 30fps frame rate was kind of a disappointment for me, so it's great to see its sequel perform so well in handheld mode, which you'd kind of expect when you consider the massive difference in hardware capabilities. Beyond the performance and visual elements, there are other aspects of a Switch release that some might find useful, so let's talk about them. Tropical Freeze requires just 6.6 GB of space in your system if you purchase the digital version of the game, and the icon featured on Switch's home screen is suitably attractive, something I know certain users will be relieved about. Speaking of interface design, all text throughout the game appears to use vector fonts and thus scales appropriately to 1080p. These elements appear razor sharp whether played on a TV or on the Switch screen itself. The rest of the user interface graphics however appear somewhat softer in comparison when played in docked mode, though on the Switch screen itself it does appear quite sharp since the screen is lower resolution. Beyond this, there is some new content included in the game at least, including the ability to play as Funky Kong, a mode which basically serves as an easy mode. It's a great addition for younger players that just want to enjoy the game or those that just want to relax. Thankfully, the main Donkey Kong mode retains the same difficulty as the Wii U version. Ultimately, while this is still very much the Wii U game, Tropical Freeze is as good as ever. The enhancements are welcome, but not necessarily essential, yet the game is so good that it's worth replaying even if you've owned it in the past. It's also another example of how smart visual design and smooth performance can help a game age like fine wine. There are so many wonderful visual and audio elements throughout that still manage to impress. Little things like the way the music fades seamlessly between above ground tracks and underwater tracks. or the fluid animation featured prominently throughout the game, or those beautiful silhouette stages, all the way to the excellent camera work which provides unique angles on each stage. Really, the main takeaway here is that Tropical Freeze is a great platform game, and the Switch port is a nice improvement over the original, especially when talking about those loading times. It hasn't been rebuilt for the new system, but it still looks great. That's all for now though, if you enjoyed this video be sure to like, subscribe, and follow us over on Twitter. And until next time, this is John signing off.